Lord God, just pray for Louise at the doctor's, Lord, or appointment. And Lord, just pray for Kenny, Lord. What a messed up world, messed up substances, Lord God. And I pray for his soul. Lord, for Leonard, I hope he's on his way. Lord, we open up to your word. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. All right. I've been talking about, in the Gospel of John, the creation, the creator. And we look at, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. But we also we have to see Jesus Christ. And later on, we're going to get into the Father. We got to understand that is. But right now, the creation. Psalms 102. Let's just pick up where we left off last time. Psalms 102, verse 25. Verse 25 says, Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them wax, shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same. And thy years shall have no end. And the children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. So we're looking at God before the heavens and the earth. Eternity. We're looking at God when the heavens and earth are gone. Eternity. We're looking at God that shall never perish, though his creation will end. God the Creator will never end. So we're dealing with the thing with the Lord Jesus Christ as Creator. Because He was born in Bethlehem in a manger wrapped with swaddling clothes. Before that time, before the Holy Spirit even conceived that in Mary's womb, Though Jesus Christ died about 33 and a half years old, Jesus Christ has no age. God has no age. And the question is, I, I dealt a couple times this week, well, when did God, and the Bible takes it for granted that there's always been God, but there's no, not always been an earth. There's not always been animals and humans and trees. But there's always been God even before the angels. And when we look at Psalms 102, verses 25 to 28, I want to see not only God in the creation, but as we're going to look at Jesus now in the creation, Jesus was always has been, and always will be. Colossians 1.16. Colossians... 116. And we must begin in verse 13. 16 is our context. Colossians 113. And I want to see Jesus Christ, God, manifest in the flesh, born sometime at 0 AD, somewhere around there, in BC. But even Jesus Christ has no beginning and no ending. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into, his, into the kingdom of his dear son, that's God. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Acts 20, 28. That's God and Jesus Christ. Who is, the who is the image of the invisible God? Jesus Christ. 
the firstborn of every creature. For by him, the one we have redemption, the, in, the image of the invisible God. When they saw Jesus, they saw God. For by him were all things created that are in, the hev in heaven. Moon, stars, planets, novas, that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, and that stretches out to satanic powers. God made Lucifer. Lucifer, in his free will, fell, created evil, wickedness, sin, rebellion, but that all came by a created being named Lucifer. All things were created by him, and for him. That's the creator, Jesus Christ, God. Always. And I know the thing in our head when we think about Jesus Christ, you know, we think about a man, 33, 30 years old, 13. And we see him in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord, but he's always been with God. In Genesis 1, we saw in the beginning God and the Spirit moved upon the waters and God said. So there's always been. So before the angels, before the cherubims, before the archangel Michael, before the beast, God in this triunity state of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have always been there. Uh, and we're going to go one book over, uh, but... All things were created by him and for him. Keep that in memory. Well, let's go to Ephesians 5. 523 says for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church he is the savior of the body well that's given by that's given by Jesus Christ himself that is his headship of the church and it doesn't say king by the way it says he's the head he's the groom we're the bride but there's our salvation there is the source of the church likened to a marriage which was also preordained by God God made man, Adam. He said, Adam, name all the animals. And after Adam got done naming all the animals, there was no one compatible with Adam. And God put Adam to sleep. We know the story. He took out a womb. He made a woman. Born him unto the man. And Adam said, without ever knowing a father, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And they were naked and they were not ashamed. That's marriage. That's ordained by God. That's ordained by church. And the church is a representative of marriage, and marriage is a representative of the church. And Christ uses that union that God gave man and woman as an example. So when we go to Revelation chapter 4, to remind us in Colossians, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, last verse. We've gone over it and over and over it. But it's important. Now, we've read this verse 411. Now, if we read it in context of Colossians 1, 16. God. 17, God. 17 and 18, God, Jesus Christ. which some religions do not put Jesus Christ as God, but verse, chapter 4, verse 11, let's read Colossians 1, 18 as Jesus Christ. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor and power. Now this matches Colossians 1, 18. For thou hast created all things, that's God and Jesus, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. 
So why do we have a book in the Bible, just take one out of our own, called Ruth? Who cares about a Moabite woman and meeting a guy who, who owns a barley harvest and he lets some people, what, what's the whole story about that? And the ending chapters is she gave birth to this child, this child gave birth to this child, and this birth gave Jesse, and Jesse had David. Who cares? That's the Jesus Christ. And now there are people say that every chapter in the Old Testament, every chapter in the Bible is something about Jesus Christ. And more will even go through every verse. And when we look at Jesus Christ, He made us, and He made us in His pleasure, and we're supposed to give Him glory, honor, and power. So when we come to you bringing you the gospel, and you reject it, and you foul mouth the gospel, and, and you just outright reject what God's given you, you're not doing what God has told you. I don't care what religion or whatever you believe in. People come up and say, well, that's not what Jesus would do. You don't know what Jesus is doing because the Bible says, Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, thereabouts, that God loves the feet of the preacher. And that gives glory and honor if it's done correctly. Now, I'm not talking about people go out in the street and bash sinners and bash homosexuals and, and the sins of the people if you're preaching Jesus. That gives him the glory. That gives him the honor. That gives opportunity to someone who doesn't know Jesus to know him. So the evolution rejects the creator. And not only did they reject the creator, but they also reject Jesus Christ, the, the uh, creator. You're not starting off on, the, on a very good shoe with, with anything that goes against God and goes against His Son. Because it's for glory and honor and power. Now, if somebody gets up in the classroom and starts teaching anything, any subject about evolution, they're not going to give any word to Jesus. They're not going to give any word to God. John 10.37 John 10 John 10 37. In John 10 37, we're going to look at the union of the Father and Son. We're going to look at the unity of God and the Son. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Well, I don't know how you can say that they're not one. All the works that Jesus Christ did through his ministry, he did through the power of God. No one has ever, ever hurt, healed themselves leprosy. No one in Jesus' time has ever opened the eyes of the blind. No man in Jesus' time ever told a man that has an arm that's shriveled up and dried up, stretch it forth and he can use it again. Those are the works of God through Jesus Christ. And when you talk about that, that, uh, what is it? The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, that sin. Well, with all the works that Jesus done, they said he did it through Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, gods, a filthy God. And what they're doing is they're saying the work of the Holy Spirit that was done through Jesus by God was done by satanic power. That is the unpardonable sin, which can only be done when Jesus was on this earth doing the miracles. So, John 5, 17. So we see Jesus as creator. We see Jesus as our savior, our creator. We see Jesus and God as one. 
5.17, Gospel of John. Jesus answered them, My Father worketh here with you, and I work. Unity. Unity. And then John 10.30, it says, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. You can't get any more clearer than that. So when John starts out, in the begins the word that we've gone through five weeks of creation, five weeks of looking at what God made and what Jesus made, showing you the unity, showing you together they are as one. And yet there are religions out there, there are people out there who don't believe it. And you're not going to get a start of any road of salvation when, it, when God is rejected and that God is Jesus Christ. So John opens up with the Word of God. John opens up with the Creator of God. John 1.1. 1, 1. In John 1.2. Moving on. The same. The Word. The same was in the beginning with God. So good. Two verses. That word was there with God in the creation. That word is God in the creation. Creation's over with. The only thing that's going to be creating it is the new heavens and new earth, but as far as what we're looking at right now, and the word was with God. So there's going to be no more rocks and trees and elephants and all that. That creation of Genesis 1 1 and 1 2, chapter 1. That's done. We've already read the heavens and earth. Are gonna, they're going to roll up as a scroll. They're going to burn with fervent heat. They're not going to last. But God will last. You say, well, how can Satan do what he did? Well, how can the earth do what he did? They were made by the same creator. So 1-3. All things were made by Him, the Word, Jesus. And without Him was not anything made that was made. So, there was no Big Bang. Because God never made a Big Bang. God never made that kind of beginning. The Big Bang defies in the beginning God said, let there be. And there... Scientists are finding all kinds of things today. Animals, minerals. It's always been there. It's not new. And you're not getting evolution of species because that's not what God made. He said every animal after their kind. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. You say, well, what about automobiles and all that? That's resources that God's given man to make. That automobile, that telephone, is all things that's come from the earth that and, God's made. And the wisdom and knowledge. That and the wisdom and knowledge. People. And God's given that to the brains. Mm -hmm. And then look what's, what brains are doing today. That, you know, I'm talking to a guy right now. He denies that free will. Well, you can make good drugs that will help, and then you can make terrible drugs. The harm. But all the ingredients of those drugs came from God. And God never intended for what man uses some things today that are being used for. It's like poison ivy. God gave poison ivy a distinctive look to say, stay away from me. God has given us things today that man uses that tells our bodies, you're not supposed to be doing this. And yet God has given the things that, you know, you take a certain medicine and it helps. It relieves pain. It gets rid of whatever the problems you are having. So, without him, that's God and Jesus. Not anything. There was no big bang. Did nothing to create. Evolution is without God and without evolution. Evolution is without. No such thing. 
The Big, ba the Big Bang becomes a god and Darwin is the school of its prophet. Big Bang has a prophet, it's called Darwin, Darwinism, and all the teachers thereof. Every teacher that teaches that Big Bang Theory, they make fun of us teaching Jesus, but what about you idiots in the classroom teaching something that you've never seen oh, by faith? You see, it's a religion. They'll come up to us, well, you've never seen God, you know, you know. <laughs> you never see the Big, Big Bang. Bang. And my textbook, by the holy inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the King James Bible has never changed. Now man has changed it, but what is man? He needs God for salvation. So Psalms 33, 6, we're still on creation. John hasn't given up on creation. It must be important. Psalm 33, 6. You gotta realize the thing is, okay, if the atheist is right, and there is no God, there is no God, we wouldn't be here. There would be no need of God if there was no God. God could just in his infinite grace and all that just not, that sat there with him in the Trinity for all eternity. He made Lucifer the song leader of heaven to worship and praise God. Well, Lucifer took it one step down, and then another step down, and another step down. And God made man in replacement of Lucifer. Revelation chapter 4. I'm going to make him to praise me. Well, look what happened. It's free will. Psalm 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, that's interesting, were the heavens made, and all the hosts, stars, planets, of them, by the breath of his mouth, the word of God. There's Jesus, we study. The breath, his breath is spirit, there's the Holy Spirit. The Trinity in creation. The Word of God. And we looked at it several, I think it was the first week that we met. And God said, and God said, and God said. The Spirit, the Spirit moves upon the waters. So when you outright, and we're on evolution now because this is an evolution subject. When you outright reject the creation ability of God, not only do you reject God, but you reject Jesus Christ and you reject the Holy Spirit. And if you reject Jesus Christ, you cannot say you're a theistic evolutionist and be happy with Jesus. And then your soul is in question whether to be damned. Because you've got to believe in God, you've got to believe in Jesus, you've got to believe in the Holy Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave us. Why would God love us if we're a product of a Big Bang? I mean, God doesn't even love the Satan's children. That love in John 3.16 is past tense. You can be, you continue to be Satan's child. He don't love you. He ain't going to spank you. He ain't going to correct them. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. But Ephesians 3.9. Ephesians 3 9 and the God that created everything that we have enjoyed today and don't enjoy the Bible says he's going to make a new heavens new earth new Jerusalem and he's going to give us a new body a body that will not have pain a body that will not have misery a body that was pre-made by Adam and Eve already before they fell we are going to be the condition that Adam and Eve were, just without sin and without that ever to be tempted. In Ephesians 3, 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world was been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. 
If God did not create it, it was not made. So John 1.4 God, the all-wise, knowing, all knowledge, all wisdom, provided for the creation. And the guy the other day tell me, well, why, why didn't God make man first? Well, the man would have been hungry and in and, and starvation, and he would have been uh, not able to drink if God didn't make the water and food before man. Then I just came out, what gives you the right to challenge God? So everything of creation that we've learned through now, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. Life came by God. Everything that lives and breathes. In him was life. Why are we here? Life. Genesis 1.11. Life. In him was life. So John, John's first chapter of his, his, of his uh, gospel is a commentary to Genesis. In Genesis 1.11, where John said, in him is life. You realize evolution teaches that from a non-living article, thing, whatever, here we are breathing and drinking and eating today? 111. And God said, here's Jesus, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seeds in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and yield, herb yielding seed after his kind. The tree yielded fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw it was good. There's life. This is John 1 4. In him was life. Trees are living, grass is living, herbs are living. And they produce their own kind. They produce their own. Unless science messes with it. God never intended science to do what God is doing. Science is trying to do what God has already done. And John told us, if there's not anything made, it's not made. So a scientist cannot come up with a kamukaduka tree because God never made the kamukaduka tree. Now he can make a plant Man can make a plant have eight different kinds of tomatoes, but God made the tomato tree. And they'll take the credit. Look at this bush we got. You can get potatoes and tomatoes on this. No, no, no. No, that came from God. You just messed with it. So what else is life? Genesis 120. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly moving creature. And you notice how it's singular. That has life. And I believe that's the first place life shows up. I believe. I don't have this Bible mark. That's John 1 4. In him was life. And follows that may fly above the earth in, in the open firmament of heaven. What's the open firmament? The sky. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth. If they're not moving, they're dead. <laughs> And they're not going to die yet. Nothing dies right now in Genesis 1. They don't die that until Genesis 3. They're actually, really 4. They bring forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. So chickens produce chickens. Turkeys produce turkeys. And God saw it was good. So there's another light. We saw vegetation life, now we see marine and fowl life. In him was life. Again, verse 24, same chapter, chapter 1. 
And God said, Jesus Christ, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind, cattle and creepy thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth on the earth after his kind. And God saw it was good. There's living again. That's life. That's what John's talking about. It's almost like John had Genesis chapter 1 open. Yeah, bug's life. And then chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Notice the R. And he's not speaking to angel. He's not speaking to the cherubim. That's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Or if you've got a perverted Bible, God the Father, God the, the water, and God the Holy Spirit. You know that, that place also I said that Bible says the Father, the water, and the Spirit? That also goes with evolution because evolution thinks everything came from water. Yeah. So if you were to read, let us make man in our image, if you were to take that perverted verse John 5, 7 and apply, apply that perverted Bible, you would have the Father and water making mankind. That's an evolutionary teacher. So you see what's damaging about perverted Bibles. You change one little word and you've got a whole messed up Bible. So he said, let us, that's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, make men in our image. Now what is that image? I mean, did Adam look like God? Absolutely not. The image of God was God the Father, the eternal soul. God the Son, the flesh. See, God already knew Jesus was going to be in the flesh. And God the Spirit, the air that we breathe. And God already knew what he was going to do before he even did Genesis 1. Because if you look at the beast of Ezekiel and look at the beast of Revelation chapter 4, there's an eagle, there's a lion, there's man, and there's an ox. Before they were created. Because the serpent is missing. And that serpent was long before Genesis 1-1 one, one. and 1-2 one, is when he fell. So let us make man in our image, our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth on it. There's life, 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 life. And John says, in him is life. In Genesis 2, 5. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. Every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. But the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Uh-oh, no rain. And there was not a man to till the ground. There was life without rain. Now, he had a mist, but people say, you know, we need rain for the crops to grow. God can take care of it without them. Verse 9, chapter 2. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight, every good for food. The tree of life, also the mist of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good, there's life again. So, we see parallel, running together, Genesis 1 and the Gospel of John chapter 1. So, like we said, and God said, that's John 1. Now let's go back to John 1. Verse 4, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And we saw already, let us. 
1 John 5, 7. Let's go over here and look. Of course, I said it's already been changed in Bibles. 1 John 5, 7. And this verse is just sometimes just totally wiped out a modern Bible. First John five seven. And there are three that bear record heaven. It's the same writer of John. Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So when you see let us, there they are. So when man was thought of, even before man was created, the Trinity is present, again, defies evolution. And when you've got our or us, it's we more than one. So I think what we'll do is we'll pick up our image next week. We're going to take up what we and how we look like to God. And I said, all right, it's, it's plain and simple. It's the body, soul, and spirit. And we will see those in Jesus Christ, but without sin. Hopefully without win next week. Lord God, I just thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you that we're created by a God that loves us. Not by a God that's wrathful and warful and, Lord, the, the pagan gods, if you're to study them. But, Lord, you loved us. And, Lord, uh, you provided us your son as a sacrifice. Because there was nothing we can do, Lord, to save our souls. And you did not just let us die and go into hell. You did not theistic evolution, just made it and let it go. You don't let things go. Now man, if he chooses to go, you let him. But that's the free will. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I pray for our aches and pains. Lord, this bug and Tracy's pain in my shoulder. And Lord, for Jesus' sake, we pray. Lord, for Kenny, Lord God, please. Clean him up, Lord, next time. For Jesus' sake, amen. Thank you.